Hey guys, just answering a couple of questions that have come up on uh, RenderMan for Blender. Um, I have another video coming out later today where I'm going over um, layers um, in PXR Surface because I forgot to do the second part of my physically based PXR Surface um, video. But I'll do that later today. But I just want to answer a couple of questions people had that have come up a couple of times here. So the first one is uh, about primvars. So what are primvars? Um, primvars are is short for primitive variables. So something like um, you know the vertex color here on on this um, this cube. So I've done a quick and dirty um, vertex paint here on the cube, and um, you know done some blue and green and red. Whatever, it doesn't really matter of the of the uh, actual uh, colors or data that you're using. But um, when we go to actually uh, render it with RenderMan, these this data isn't exported um, by default with with RenderMan. So if we go and look in the um, the mesh data over here, um, we see our color here. Um, to set it up to export with RenderMan, there's an area down here called primitive variables. Um, so all you have to do is add a new primitive variable. Um, and you can name it something like my color. And then all you have to do is select where you want to get the data from. So basically you just have to give it a name and where to get the data from. So here I'm going to set, set it to get it from the vertex color. Um, use that, which matches up to that. Um, and I give it a name here, my color. So then the question is, where can you use that? So you can use that data in your uh, shader networks. So for example, probably where, if you're using uh, vertex, vertex colors or something like a vertex group data, you probably want to use it in the primvar, uh, PXR primvar node. Um, so all you have to do over the PXR primvar node is put in the same name here, uh, my color, and then you select it as a color type. And then you just tie that up and say like, okay, I want to put this color into the uh, base color of my PXR Disney, and then I go hit render, and then what it's going to do is just pick up the color from um, uh, from the the vertex color here, and then pass it over to my PXR Disney. Um, okay, so that's what we got there. So other stuff you could use this for would be, let's say you want to do multiple UV maps, and you want to do you have want to have multiple textures on. Um, uh, on on this uh, cube here. So by default, the f the primary UV map. See this one here. So the primary UV map gets uh, gets exported by default. But you could set up a second UV map. So my we'll call this. Oops, hit delete. All right, we'll call this my UV two. Um, and then say get this from the UV texture second UV, and then, um, so there's a lot of nodes that have this primvar uh, field in it where you can enter in a custom primvar. So anywhere you can enter that, you can use the, the primvars that you put in here. So anyway, so in the in the manifold here for the texture, you do something like my UV2 and, um, and tie that in. So if you want to use multiple UV maps, that's how you would do it. You do the second one. Um, through the primitive variable variables here. Okay, so that's primitive variables. Another uh, question that came up recently was uh, filmic tone mapping. Um, it's a uh, let's just revert my file here. Um, so filmic tone mapping is there is based off a it's well it's add on to to Blender for cycles. Um, and it's all it does is it applies a tr color transform to your render to make it look more lifelike and you know sort of uh, tone maps the the image. Um, and they're both based off a of paper from uh, as a game developer, the guys who did um, the guys who did the uh, Last of Us game, I think. Anyway, um, there you can look up the paper. I'll just Google film, filmic tone mapping. Anyway, so we actually have something similar in RenderMan. Um, there 
is a area in the scene properties called display filters and sample filters. Um, there's a couple of different options you have here. Uh, one of them is uh, um, the filmic tone mapping filter, and you just add a display filter here, call it filter, give it a name, um, and then so you actually have a lot of controls to go and change the um, uh, the the tone mapping parameters here. And um, like I said, there's display filters and sample filters. The difference between them is the display filter um, applies applies to the final image. So like imagine like you have a flat image and then it goes and does the filtering on the uh, the tone mapping on the actual image. Um, the sample filter applies the um, the filter on each sample as it comes in. So imagine like each each time you're like shooting a ray into the scene, it would go and um, tone map each ray that comes in versus um, tone mapping the final image after the after the samples have been combined. It just it just ends up looking a little different. Um, it's a little hard to explain exactly why they're so different, but you have a couple different options of, uh, of display filters you can use here. Um, uh, like I said, there's the filter tone map one, there's a background display, which if you just want to put a color in your background, you could do that. Anyway, so the film, the filmic tone mapper, um, it will, it will change your image slightly. So if I go and, um, let's see here, if I, if I go to my uh, catalog, oh, I didn't, I didn't render it out yet. So let's just render this out really quickly, and I'll show the, I'll show the difference um, here. Um, so let's just do our uh, Pixar Disney, and then we'll put an environment light in the scene. Um, do, 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 do. Um, just the reason I'm putting an environment light in the scene here is so we have a a more uh, 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 um, realistic lighting scenario so we can see it here. So here is my render with the environment light. Okay, so that's with the environment light with the tone mapper on. Um, and you're not going to, you know, there's not too much in this scene to look at, but, um, we'll see what the difference is after we take it off. All right, there's my render done. So let's go and take it off. And then we go hit render here. So again, all it's doing is tone mapping the final image that comes out. But the point is that we have a similar option with, uh, with render man that we can, that we can do. Um, and yeah, it'll just it'll just give you a sort of more more realistic looking image. I know it's a really popular add on with uh, with cycles and Blender, so um, I just want to show that the options available. Okay, so here is here's our render without the tone mapper, um, and then with the tone mapper, we can see we get a little more uh, a little more sort of like softer um, look here. But again, with a more complex scene, you'd be able to see the difference better. But it's just a quick and easy way to make your renders look a little more uh, realistic. Okay, so like I said, I'm doing another uh, video today with the um, with the layered materials. Um, so maybe I'll show an example with that one with the Filmic Tone Mapper. Um, and then um, actually on Monday there actually should be another there should be another video with some new features that are coming out um, with 21.4 uh, for RenderMan and the Blender plugin. So uh, that's it for now. This will be a short one. Talk to you